million euros. That's a lot of zeros. These were the assets of the alternative investment fund sector at the end of 2008. They can make big money when times are good, but their activities can also threaten entire markets when their investments are too risky. Attempts to better control the risks in that sector have culminated in a vote here in the European Parliament on a new regulatory framework, nicknamed the Hedge Funds Directive. It forms part of an ambitious EU programme to better supervise and regulate high-risk financial activities. The financial crisis served to highlight the lack of transparency in the activities of alternative investment fund managers, considered especially risky as they're not governed by the same rules as those for retail investors. They're regulated by a combination of member state financial and company law, which doesn't adequately reflect the cross-border nature of the risks posed. The European Commission put forward a proposal for harmonised EU laws to monitor the hedge fund sector in April 2009. Since then, intense negotiations between the European Parliament and Council, co-legislators, have sought to find agreement on measures. Jean-Paul Gauzès, responsible for the directive in Parliament, has been in negotiations with three consecutive EU Council presidencies, Sweden, Spain and Belgium, during the last 15 months, since a first draft of the text was adopted by the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. The compromise that was found is in my eyes a good one in the current context because it deals satisfactorily with two important issues for Parliament, that of the information investment capital managers must give to employees of targeted companies and the measures to avoid the asset stripping of those companies. Secondly, the introduction of a European passport for the funds and fund managers, both an intra-European passport for those that are registered in Europe and later on for those registered outside the European Union. Some countries wanted national systems to remain in place, others wanted a passport. There were debates on what powers ESMA, the European Security and Markets Authority, would have in the distribution of passports. So the control of their distribution, all that was complicated with the member states. Does the directive go far enough? I think the really significant steps will allow us to respond appropriately to the need for regulation in this sector. What I do regret is the delay. Because we've been working on this for 18 months, the directive will be applicable in 2013 and the process will end between 2015 and 2018. The legislator's responsiveness versus the responsiveness and the creativity of the financial sector is disproportionate. But I don't really see how we can significantly shorten the process. This directive is just one in a series of rules that EU institutions are hoping to implement to avoid a repeat of the financial crisis. Others will deal with short selling, bonuses and derivatives amongst other issues. Hedge funds and other high-risk investments can inject a lot of capital into the market, making it easier for those who otherwise might not be able to borrow money to do so. But they must be put on a leash for the security of the global economic system, a process that has just started here today. To find out more about financial governance, visit our website eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.